We are back with a brand new free agent acquisition, so you acquire a new film session. That won't happen every time, but I do think we have to have a conversation about Blake Bell, right? Cowboy Nation got a lot of questions, uh, and maybe the answer to your question is in your manila folder. <laughs> Who can quote that rap lyric? Anyway, uh, but Blake Bell, though, uh, tight end, full back in my mind sometimes. We'll talk about that later. Um, form, former uh, former quarterback at Oklahoma, but you know Baker Mayfield showed up and uh, they kind of benched him. But they say, hey, we'll do this bell dozer package and make you a goal line guy, right, Blake Bell? Right, right. So that happened. But as of late, he's been playing tight end in Kansas City. He's the second guy, the guy not named uh, not named Travis Kelsey. So. I think what Blake Bell is going to be for us is he's going to be new old Blake Jarwin. But then I think Blake Jarwin is going to be new old Jason Witten. You see what I mean? So Jarwin is going to get the majority of the passing game, the looks, the, the targets, the vertical offense. That's going to be Jarwin's bag. But Blake Bell is going to be that cowboy tight end that kind of, you know, catch a pass every two games, but catch a touchdown every five games. You know, that guy. Um, but for the most part, he's going to give you value blocking in these dirty run situations, right? Let's take a look at Blake Bell. He's going to be our tight end. He's in motion right here. And one thing I really liked what Kansas City did, the Cowboys didn't always do very well, was they never asked Blake Bell to block somebody he couldn't block right everybody they asked blake bell to block was in his caliber um whether it be second level guys like these uh dbs and maybe a cornerback over there or something uh like an off the ball linebacker they asked him to block these three four edge defenders these defensive ends but they'll be a little smaller he can deal with those guys a little bit they never asked him to block a down lineman like somebody that's 290 they never asked him to do that and we always saw uh jason Witten try to block those guys and get smoked right but we see Blake Bell here climbing to the second level, boom, 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 sealing up his blocks. And he did a whole bunch of that. I think he was really good at it as long as he was in his caliber. Take a look at this play, right? Let me fast forward here, get to this point. Take a look at this play. Blake Bell is at the end of the line. He's the right tight end. Follow my mouse here. He's a tight end to the, uh, to the far right here. Hey, long as he's climbing the second level, right? Dealing with those kind of guys. Oh, yo, yo, jersey is 21. Cool. I can block you. Get to the second level. Boom. Deal with it, right? Uh, I got some other examples too, right? Of him blocking um, edge players and, you know, how they got them moving. These pull blocking concepts that they had Blake Bell involved in that I think Dallas could, uh, could, pro could possibly utilize. So like I said, I think he has enough blocking ability to deal with these edge guys. Like these bigger linebackers, these defensive end, these smaller defensive end, but bigger linebacker guys, right? I think all these guys are in his caliber. Fantastic fantastic job right here right what's his outside zone step kind of sort of but hey boom 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 hook log right <laughs> turn is gonna create a little run lane right here for the uh backside puller that's uh eric fisher there pulling to the right but hey creating this little gap right here fantastic now cowboys don't do a whole bunch of uh gap assigned you know run plays or whatever we we mostly get into the zone bag and let zeke figure out where he wants to go but if mike mccarthy ever decide that we're gonna pull something like this boom 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 hit 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 c gap right here log fantastic play by uh blake bell Let's take a look at another one, him blocking an edge player. Now, you can't see Blake Bell because he kind of disappeared right here, but he's on our left, the, the left side of the screen. Let's, uh, let me just run it, and then we'll see him, right? There we go. You kind of see Blake Bell in the fight down there, dealing with a bigger guy with one of these bigger linebackers. I, I like it, man, because he's scrappy. He can fight. He has blocking ability. He can't play quarterback no more, so he got to do something to stand in the league. You know what I mean? Um... Like I said, man, it depends. I'd rather him blocking. <laughs> I'd rather him blocking Matt Judon <laughs> than whoever the hell 98 is. You see what I mean? Uh, so that's just another uh, solid block there by um, by uh, Blake Bell. And this play as well. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Same deal, right? That's actually the same kind of play that we watched at first, right? We're going to get a pull from the backside. He's going to log off his guy. Hit that gap right there. Consistency, consistency, consistency. Um, and I like him as a blocker. So if Dallas wants to run any two tight end sets, if we want to, um, you know, bring in Blake Jar or keep Blake Jarwin in the game, 
but displace them and put them out in the slot or something like that. But we still want somebody in the box that can hang back and block like, you know, uh, you know, we want to check to a run play or something like that. Then you can bring in Blake Bell, put Blake Bell next to Lael Collins or Tyron Smith, uh, displace Blake Jarwin, have him at receiver, and you could just continue to run your offense without changing too much personnel. Something I really like about Kansas City, what they did with uh, Blake Bell is that they got him blocking on the move. And that's what kind of gives me fullback vibes, right? So they're going to run the counter right here. Uh, and the counter is when you run two pullers. It could be one puller sometimes, but for the most part, I know of of, of counter, they run two pullers. One puller, the guard mostly, is going to uh, kick out the first guy and the second guy is going to wrap to the linebacker. Let me just run this play so you can get an idea of what I'm saying. That's counter, right? So the left guard, 77, and Blake Bell are going to pull. Boom, 77 is going to block this first outside guy. He's going to kick him. Bop. Blake Bell is going to come up and wrap to number 48 right here. Bop. And uh, running back is just going to go off of uh, off uh, Blake Bell's butt right there. And they did it really, really well here in Kansas City. And they ran a lot. They ran a lot. And, you know, Cowboys like to get our guys on the move, too. We like to pull. We like to get our linemen in space. Um so if for whatever reason, you know, you don't want to pull your tackles, right? I mean, our tackles are good at pulling. But if you didn't want to pull Tyron and Leia, right? Cool. Just pull Blake. Pull Blake. But imagine Blake doing this from the backfield, though. This is what gives me, you know, further fullback vibes. So one day, if Jamez is kind of pissing you off, you feel like Jamez ain't catching the ball right. He ain't blocking good people. He ain't big enough. Then you could just put Blake Bell at fullback and just run him. I like that. Let's give y'all another example of that running that uh running that counter. Here we go. It's gonna be to the other side. Boom, boom, boom. Kick, wrap. Gonna get a little block. Somebody didn't block 23. What happened to 23? 23 just came down and made a good play. But in terms of Blake Bell, him being right here, his block was pretty good. I don't hate Blake Bell's block at all. And the good thing about running the counter, getting him moving, it ain't like Blake Bell coming around and blocking somebody 300 pounds. Blake Bell is staying in that caliber of people he can block. He just had to pull to get there. I think I got one more play. I think I got one more play uh, discussing Blake Bell on the move. I do. He's uh, on our right. He's the farthest Kansas City Chief to our right. Take a look at my mouse. He's going to pull. Get out of there. <laughs> Lee blocking for his running back. Hey, man. And all those yards that were gotten by this running back is because Blake Bell was so tenacious and <laughs> with his front side blocking. Anyway, let's move on to some catches. This catch reel ain't going to be very long, so I'm just going to play it and just kind of talk over it, right? So, um, am I excited about the Blake Bell move? You know, I just think it's business as usual, man. I just think, um, you know, we lost some tight ends. You kind of got to have somebody to replace those tight ends. I think Blake Bell is just the guy that's going to come in and give us replacement level play at tight end. Now, do we improve here? Do we improve? I think Blake Jarwin is an improvement over Jason Witten. I think that's big facts. So is Blake Bell better than what we were getting from Dalton Schultz? Because this is what Dalton Schultz was going to be, right? Dalton Schultz was going to be our predominant come in block guy, catch a few passes dude, right? Well, Blake Bell got more catches than uh, than uh, Dalton Schultz. I like this. We need to look at this. We need to we need to uh, take a look at this play. Um, Blake Bell is probably going to catch more uh, passes than Dalton Schultz, and Dalton Schultz never developed into the blocker that we thought he was going to be. But Blake Bell is that blocker right now, so I don't mind getting getting an older tight end. And you know, Blake Bell like twenty seven or something, twenty what, what twenty whatever, twenty eight. Um, but a guy that's established already, opposed to just throwing Dalton Schultz in the fire and he's not ready, begging him to develop. You see what I mean? So um, I don't even know if Dalton Schultz on the team anymore. Somebody help me out with that. But um, Hey, I like this though. Take a look at him right here. We're gonna. Hey, I'm blocking Joey Bosa. Check. End up in the flat. Well, end up in the um the uh hitch route. Right. We're gonna end up in a hitch. Hey, I don't mind it. I don't mind. Like I said, he's not full on blocking Joey Bosa. This is only a check. Check, check, check. Then I'm gonna release. Right. Check and release. Check and release. Kansas City did this a bunch. I like how he hung in there for the check. He didn't just. Uh, comply with the release he didn't just come off the line and just show his hands he actually gave the image of i'm blocking joey bosa release <laughs> you see what i mean and uh that's the first down play right you know if, if if this third and one we need one yard we need two yards cool check boom 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 all right let me uh continue to uh move this along but i'm gonna continue talking about blake uh blake bell so 
do we have to draft a tight end? Hell no. And I think that's what this is for, right? I know that a lot of people want us to get on board with drafting a tight end, but I, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of spending a draft pick on a rookie and trying to expect him to be great today, right? I'm not expecting a rookie to be great today. Another little three-yard hitch right here from Blake Bell on the left side of the screen. I'm not interested in trying to get a rookie to be great and help us out today. So what this Blake Bell thing does is that we get to use another draft pick in another place, right? That could be linebacker depth. That could be um, some more offensive line depth. It could be, you know what I mean, D-line, whatever, whatever it is. We only got seven picks. And that's one less pick we get to use on a tight end, you know? Just like signing um, um, Laugh Out Loud Clinton Dix, that's one less pick we got to use on, you know, safety depth, right? So I think we're really setting ourselves up to, uh, you know, to, to be in position to get the best player available, whoever the hell that is at 17. And that we ne we we not just out here reaching for somebody because we feel like we need a tight end, because we feel like we need a center, because we feel like we need a safety one tech or a three tech. Cowboys are doing a fantastic job of covering their ass. So, um, you know, whenever it gets draft time, we can really take the best player there. And that's going to be CD Lamb at 17 because that's what I'm on my campaign for. <laughs> Look at all this snow. Anyway, um, those are my thoughts on Blake Bell. Also, one more thing. My bad. I know I'm kind of rambling a little bit. He can play kickoff for you. He, he, he can go down and tackle, and he can uh, play kick return. I saw that in the film as well, but Game Pass is free, so y'all can go check that out on your own time. I'm not breaking down no damn special teams. Now I'm wrapping this video up. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Uh, I like Blake Bell, man. Let's see what he does. Let's see what he can do for the culture, and let's win this damn Super Bowl next year. Get that boy two rings, you know what I mean? Blake Bell about to win two rings in a row, boy. Y'all hold it down for the Doski, Woski, and the Peaski Weeski. Until next time, I think I'm going to do a follow Follow up film session on Duntari Post, so y'all stay tuned for that. Peace. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that's subscribing to my Patreon. Just one dollar a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's Patreon.com/slash Vach Lombardi. I appreciate the support, Doski Woski. Salute.